there's something that that you have said many times in interviews, and you've even said it in this conversation, which is that you don't particularly have a high self opinion, um, that you don't particularly think that you're talented or whatever. And and objectively, anybody can hear that and say that you know that's nonsense, right? And I wonder, I, I wonder if if in a sense, right, this idea that you are not particularly you know, you don't b- believe the hype around Bastille or Dan Smith, which I th- actually think is really healthy and keeps you grounded. But, but it's almost like you, 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 you don't think that what you do is good. And I wonder if that that combined with this kind of fear of 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 performing is, in a sense, it's like you're rebuilding the scaffolding every single day. Like you have achieved all these. I mean, we haven't even talked about Happier and some of your other incredible hits, and and also just the acclaim, but it's almost as if you have to, you're almost like rebuilding the scaffolding every day and then it collapses and you're like, I'm just, I'm not good. And then where do you, yeah. I mean, not to sort of psychoanalyze it, but where do you think that comes from? I mean, do you, do you think it's, it's a, it's a defense mechanism to keep you grounded or do you think that you really believe that you're not as talented as other people might say you are? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I think it's. I think it's probably. I'm sure there's a there's a bit of defence mechanism in that. I think early early days in the UK, uh, the UK music press, particularly at the time, were pretty brutal to us as yeah. well. So I think that was quite weird for me to to. Was that just painful? Quite, quite. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to have quite naively been building these songs that were, you know. Uh, probably you quite, about, uh, yeah. quite earnest but these were they, it was just what we were doing it was like part of our you know it was part of this was just like a huge part of our lives and then to see that reacted to um it was a real like wake up moment because you know by at that point i was someone that you know would read like a lot of music journalism at the time so suddenly i guess you can kind of divide in your head your life yeah. and that thing and suddenly when those things intersect um and they're not positive that was a real shock and i think i definitely believed them because for me these were a lot of the kind of journalists and 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 publications that i that you were reading for, read and form my opinions yeah. of you know and, and there was like there was one particular i know it's such a like lame lame cliche to to have been affected by a bad review but there was one really nasty one in the newspaper that everyone that i know like all my friends like my f- family or like family friends like people that i barely know but you know would have been reading and it was like the full back page a big photo of me and like a one star rinsing rinsingly horrible review and it was one of those things i remember reading it and thinking like half of the stuff in here is 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 it, i think it was just a bit of a like they just didn't like us and they came to a gig yeah. to just take us down and it was so funny reading it cuz loads of the those are the sort of things in the in the that they were saying about us kind of weren't true. And it was like, they've not really mentioned the gig. They just really wanted to have a big old pop at us. And I wish I was, I wish I was better at, you know, like I, there's a version of my life where that would have just rolled off, you know, like yeah. rolled off my, rolled off my back, but it, it didn't. And obviously it got in my head, which was, which was a real shame. Cause it was like just after the album had come out and gone to number one and was doing really well. And we just, we'd gone to the, the States, but this thing just like played on my mind. And it's, it's so lame. I wish I was, I wish I was more chilled out. I wish I was cooler, but but I think I believed it, and and just kind of that's really stuck with me. It's a human reaction. You're talking about a review from the Guardian, and I I, I read that review, and I, it was from from when the first record was released. And the, the the critic writes, "It's hard to work out why these songs have made a greater connection than those of hundreds like minded songwriters." Calls it mildly melancholic piano ballads. That album that he's writing about was the biggest selling album of the year, digital album of the year. And it's yeah. it's hard because I'm the same way. When when somebody says a, a mean thing or criticizes how I built this or or my other shows, I do focus on that. And I think it's it's um, both a weakness, but it's also, I think, a natural human trait because we're like, why? What did I do wrong? Yeah. Even though hundreds of people and critics liked the album and clearly audiences liked it, you yeah. we tend to just focus on that that negative review i know it's 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 really it's ridiculous isn't it and i think i think um you know as we've progressed the reviews have become nicer but i and i i like to think i care less but but i have just you know everyone there's there are so many cliches that exist of like don't read them whatever but you know at the time at the time i did and it and it happened to really get get in my head and uh and i guess like potentially preys on any insecurities you might have and kind of exacerbates them. And, and uh, so I, I, I think we had this really strange period at the beginning where suddenly, you know, this song was huge and this album was big and it was taking us all over the world. And it was just such a, you know, such a privilege to, to get to basically chase this record around the planet, you know, from 
to Australia and to Asia and you know to South Africa and and America eventually you know and and pretty much every continent it was it was wild and it was amazing but I I in the back of my mind was like it's all going to fall apart any minute because you know because yeah. I'm terrible and we're we're terrible which was uh you know I'm sure again a lot of fun to be around <laughs> but uh but yeah definitely led to it didn't it didn't help with my already existing self-loathing <laughs> You guys were playing Glastonbury, the Isle of Wight, the Reading Festival. I mean, big festivals, probably on smaller stages. Very small stages. Yeah. How did you How did you cope with 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 going to these big festivals and being on these smaller stages where you were still introducing your music to probably most most of the people in the audience still didn't know it? Was that? Oh, oh ev- absolutely everyone. I think a weird thing that we had at the beginning was our shows were selling out and people were coming to see us, and you know, it felt like something was happening, but but. The, the media, particularly in the UK, just was like not interested in us at all. So, you know, it was, they, it kind of lent itself to this slightly outsider mentality that we've always always had a little bit in that, you know, we were looking around to our peers who were getting played on the radio or being on TV or, you know, getting press and all this stuff. And we were kind of not getting any of that, but we knew that people were coming to it and loving the songs and, and that. So there was, it was kind of confusing in that respect, but... Um, yeah, we played it. We were playing at festivals, and I guess like, still to this day, you know, you see a festival crowd as let's not assume people here know any or that much of your music, and it's about kind of winning them over in a hopefully positive way. But Kyle, our keyboard player, you know, he used to his job at the time was building and packing down the stages at festivals. Wow! So there was one time we we played we played <laughs> at the, the Isle of Wight. He was the roadie too. Yeah, he was. Yeah, so we played at the Isle of Wight festival uh, on this like small little tent that he'd built and then he had to like take off his overalls get into it get get into his like jeans and t-shirt come play the gig and then yeah. and then we finished the gig and it was like back, you know, back to work back to work but um yeah it was it was it was interesting i remember there was a point playing reading festival when we had a song called overjoyed that had come out as part of an ep right towards the beginning and um that was a that was a real moment of walking out on stage and this tent was completely packed and overjoyed is quite a weird song it's it's a piano it's a kind of piano song with these mm-hmm. sort of sk- tripping skippy electronic beats and i remember just playing the first chord and starting to sing the opening line and the entire tent singing it back at us wow and me just thinking oh wow okay this is insane and then we went straight from that straight off stage upstairs into the bbc radio one treehouse and we did a sort of tv session for that of another song of ours called bad blood um and kind of going from one to the other and you know two of the quite big djs from that station were hosting the event and they sort of knew us but were like oh wow i don't know it just felt like we won them over and won the wow. crowd over and that was a real kind of pivotal moment for us um where suddenly our music started getting played on radio one which is quite a big deal here yeah um and yeah we had our first like proper amazing festival set. 